Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Calgary, Midnapur. We'll uh, applause. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's always a pleasure to be here in the House to speak on behalf of my constituents in Calgary, Midnapur. Mr. Speaker, I'm here today to discuss the bill that is in front of us. Bill C-27, which is an act to enact uh, the Consumer Privacy Protection Act, the Personal Information and Data Protection Tribunal Act, and the Artificial Intelligence and Data Act, and to make consequential and related amendments to other acts, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, it's very interesting that this bill is before the House today because uh, when I look at the contents of it, uh, it talks about the three different components. And in fact, I see within the background or is prepared here in the legislative report that it is dubbed the Digital Charter Implementation Act 2022. Well, that's very interesting, Mr. Speaker, because um, I actually am reminded by this, by this uh, bill that's in front of us here today, the Digital Charter Implementation Act, of another digital charter, Mr. Speaker. And that is the digital charter that was implemented in 2019. 2019, a very important year, by this Liberal government. And uh, it was... It was uh, brought into effect by the Minister of um, Industry and Innovation at that time. And I believe, uh, Mr. Speaker, that this document was actually supposed to be a tool to protect Canadians and a tool to protect Canadians from foreign interference. And that digital charter in 2019, Mr. Speaker, along with many other tools, failed. So I do hope, Mr. Speaker, that the implementation of this new digital charter in 2022 will be far more successful than its predecessor of the 2019 digital charter. And I'll point out, Mr. Speaker, that the 2019 digital charter, the principles within it, number eight was listed as a strong democracy a strong democracy. In fact, uh, Mr. Speaker, if I may say, at this time in 2019, I was the shadow minister for democratic institutions. I worked uh, alongside the current minister for families, children, and social development, uh, who was at that time the minister of democratic institutions. And I actually believe that the 2019 digital charter of that day was supposed to be uh, a tool, as I said, in coordination with other tools to protect Canadians from foreign interference. Now, the same year that that 2019 digital charter was issued, again, with the principle number eight of being a strong democracy, we also had um, the Minister of Democratic Institutions at that time, the current Minister for Families, Children and Social Development, uh, attempt to implement another suite of safeguards on foreign interference back in 2019, along with the 2019 Digital Charter. And in fact, here I have the Minister's opening statements to PROC on safeguarding the 2019 general election and the security intelligence threats to the Elections Task Force. And I cite from it, Earlier this week, along with my colleague, the Minister of National Defence, I announced the release of the 2019 update to the Communications Security Establishment's report entitled Cyber Threats to Canada's Democratic Process. This updated report highlights that it is very likely Canadian voters will encounter some form of foreign cyber interference in the course of the 2019 federal election. While CSE underlines that it is unlikely this interference will be on the scale of the Russian activity in the 2016 U.S. presidential election, the report notes that in 2018, half of the advanced democracies holding national elections, representing a threefold increase since 2015, had their democratic processes targeted by cyber threat activity, and that Canada, Mr. Speaker, is not also 
at risk and in fact compromised, we would l later see, Mr. Speaker. This upward trend is likely to continue in 2019 and we saw on to 2021, Mr. Speaker. We've seen that certain tools used to strengthen civic engagement have been co-opted to undermine, disrupt and destabilize democracy. Social media has been misused to spread false or misleading information. In recent years, we've seen foreign actors try to undermine democratic societies and institutions, electoral processes, sovereignty and security. The CSE's 2017 and 2019 assessments, along with ongoing Canadian intelligence and the experiences of our allies and like-minded countries, have informed and guided our efforts over the past year. This has led to the development of an action plan based on four pillars engaging in all aspects of Canadian society. And I will go on, uh, Mr. Speaker, to expand these four pillars uh, that were supposed to protect us in addition to the 2019 Digital Charter, the predecessor to this legislation here today today. Uh, on January 30th, I announced the Digital in Citizen Initiative and a $7 million investment, and I'm continuing from the Minister of Democratic Institutions speech, towards improving the resilience of Canadians against online disinformation in response to the increase in false, misleading and inflammatory information published online and through social media. The Government of Canada has made it a priority to help equip citizens with the tools and skills needed to critically assess online information. We're also leveraging the Get Cyber Safe National Public Awareness Campaign to educate Canadians about cyber security and the simple steps they can take to protect themselves online. She, she continued, we have established the critical election incident public protocol. This is a simple, clear and nonpartisan process for informing Canadians if serious incidents during the writ period threaten the integrity of the 2019 general election. This protocol puts the decision to inform Canadians directly in the hands of five of Canada's most experienced public servants. I'm not sure where those public servants are now, Mr. Speaker, who have a responsibility to perhaps outside to ensure the effective, peaceful transition of power and continuity of government through election periods. The public service uh, has effectively played this role for generations and it will continue to fulfill this important role through the upcoming election and beyond. Under the second pillar, improving organizational readiness, one new key initiative uh, is to ensure that political parties are all aware of the nature of the threat so that they can take the steps needed to enhance their internal security practices and behaviors. The CSE's 2017 report as the 2019 update highlight the political parties continue to represent one of the greatest vulnerabilities in the Canadian system. Canada's, can, Canada's national securities agencies will offer threat briefings to political party leadership. Under the third pillar, combating foreign interference, Mr. Speaker. How interesting. The government has established the Security and Intelligence Threats to Elections Task Force to improve awareness of foreign threats and support incident assessment and response. The team brings together CSC, CSIS, the RCMP and Global Affairs Canada to ensure a comprehensive understanding of any response to threats. We know there have also that uh, information is also is also manipulated, create confusion and exploit um, ex exploit information. She concluded, while it is impossible to fully predict what kinds of threats we see in the run up to the C Canada's general election, I want to assure this committee that Canada has put in place a solid plan. We continue to test and probe our readiness, and we will continue to take whatever steps we can towards ensuring a free and fair security election in 2019. That, along, Mr. Speaker, with the 2019 Digital Charter, the predecessor to today's legislation, failed to protect Canadians from foreign interference, along with the Debates Commission, which she, lo and behold, announced six months er earlier, where she also took the opportunity to announce the government's nominee for Canada's first Debates Commissioner, the Right Honourable David Johnson, the very rapporteur that was named now to defend our foreign interests, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the result of the incompetence of the Minister of Democratic Institutions of that time in coordination with the digital charter of 2019 that was supposed to protect us leaks from CSIS up to 13 members of this house compromised a former CPP consul general bragging about influencing election outcomes one member in this house of commons that had to leave their liberal caucus madam speaker 
I will conclude in saying, I certainly hope that the digital charter, this, this bill, C-27, is far more effective in helping and safeguarding Canadians than the 2019 digital charter that failed to do that. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Présidente. Questions and comments. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government, House Leader. Yes, uh, Madam Speaker, um, it's interesting how the member is kind of like twisting her arguments around to talk about election foreign interference under this particular piece of legislation. And I'd like to remind the member and then pose it in the form of a question. Foreign interference in elections is nothing that's new. In fact, uh, the Harper regime many years ago was told about it, and Stephen Harper chose to do nothing. The minister that was responsible for doing something was the current leader of the Conservative Party. He too chose to do nothing at all. I'm wondering if maybe she should be reserving some of her criticism towards her leader and the former Prime Minister who sat on their butts and did absolutely nothing on foreign interference. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Midnapore. Speaker, this is what we hear repetitively, repeatedly from this government, and is that it's not their fault. Even though after eight years of this Liberal government, we have Canadians at food banks, we have mortgages and rents that have doubled, we've got a public service strike of a magnitude that we haven't seen in 40 years, and we've had foreign interference. You know what? A poly of government will change this. A poly of government will take responsibility. Honourable member, that we do not use names of members currently in the House. A Conservative government under the current uh, opposition leader will take responsibility and will bring uh, legislation back on track so we don't have to see this again. The Honourable Member for Trois-Rivières. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So instead of saying it's uh, the, fo uh, the, fo the fault of one side or the other side, which doesn't uh, take us anywhere, I'd like to ask my colleague, uh, and I found her speech very interesting, does she believe that uh, Bill C-27 is still as valid as it might have been since uh, the arrival of AI, since the arrival of chat to GPT and similar tools? Do we need to start over, or is she happy with the result? The Honourable Member for calgary Midnapore. Well, thank you very much uh, to my colleague for the question. Yes, I think that we do need to do something uh, about artificial intelligence. And what I've seen in this bill, but also uh, elsewhere, I think it's clear that there's a lot of work that needs to be done. But... Uh, uh, in the beginning of his comments, he said in, that it was whether the fault of one side or the other. Well, it's never going to be the fault of the Bloc Québécois because they'll never be the government. <laughs> Questions and comments, the Honourable Member for Nunavut. Um, 19,000 Canadians were affected by the Equifax breach. Uh, 600,000 were affected by the Cambridge Analytica breach that was exposed in 2018, yet compensation for Canadians was far less than what it was for Americans. Does the member not think it is time for reform to bring parity and equivalency for citizens on both sides of the border? Yeah. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Midnapore. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President, to my colleague um, for that question. Um, you know, I really think what we need to be thinking about is our own citizens and our uh, intentions um, in, in the House, and I think that includes also um, amongst our, our own doings, not only within the House, but within the businesses we own and run, and um, I really think that before considering others, we absolutely have to consider our actions, uh, not only within this House, but also uh, on the periphery of what we're doing just outside of this House, and if those could be perceived as negative or a conflict of interest. So I think it's always important to think about ourselves first, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Questions and comments? Questions et commentaires? The Honourable uh, Member for South Shore St. Margaret's. Hi, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the, the government uh, introduced this bill uh, last June, and one of the claims that the uh, minister made in his opening speech was in this 120-page bill, 
he was protecting children. Yet the word minors appears once in the definition section and it says that, uh, that in 120 pages that sensitive information of minors must be protected in the bill, but it doesn't define what a minor is or sensitive information. Uh, so I wonder if the member could comment about whether or not that really has any power or validity to protect children, which we all want to do. I have to give the Honourable Member for Calgary Midnapur uh, 10 seconds to, uh, for a short answer. Yeah, thank you very much to my uh, colleague uh, for, that, for that question. You know, I, I'm not very encouraged that, uh, of the validity of this bill to protect anyone, given my speech and my statement around the results of the 2019 Digital Charter. Um, so I'm not encouraged, but I certainly hope for something better. Resuming debate, uh, the Honourable Member for Calgary Nose Hill.